An exorcist has warned Catholics in the Philippines about cursed rosaries and religious items. The official news outlet of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines first reported on warnings from Reverend Father Ambrosio Nonato Legaspi on September 4th. Legaspi is the chief exorcist at the Office of Exorcism in the Novaliches Diocese, also known as Liberanox. During the diocese's monthly radio show, Legaspi said Satanists like the Illuminati gave out cursed rosaries that attract evil spirits. Another a Catholic priest and exorcist in the Philippines has issued a warning about cursed rosaries that attract evil spirits. Well, do you pray the rosary? Should Christians pray the rosary? What is the rosary anyway? That's what we'll be talking about today. You're watching the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Hello, I'm Johnny Martin. Joining us today for our panel discussion are Brother Juan Fisher in Los Angeles, California, Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California, and Brother Donald Pinnock in Toronto, Canada. Hi, brothers. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, Hello Brother, Brother Johnny. Johnny. Brother Johnny. Now, today, brothers and dear viewers, we're talking about the rosary. At the start of the program, we saw a news report about a Catholic priest here in the Philippines issuing a warning about what are called cursed rosaries that supposedly attract evil spirits. Well, that news item is likely of interest to Catholics, for they are encouraged by their clergy to pray the rosary even on a daily basis. Let's watch this next video. Welcome to Catholic 101. Today we'll be talking about the rosary. And on Catholic 101, you get one lesson in one minute, and it costs you nothing. My name is Father Rocky from Relevant Radio. Very happy to talk to you today about the rosary. Do you have a rosary? I have a couple rosaries here. Here's my wooden rosary. It comes from the Holy Land, and it's got a St. Benedict medal above the head of Jesus. And on the rosary, there are 59 different beads. And the first one is for the creed. The next three are for Hail Marys, and then they have an Our Father bead before each mystery. And then five mysteries of ten, they're called decades, and all the way through until the end. Rosaries can be blessed if they're blessed, they're sacramentals. You can kiss it, you can keep it in your pocket. And I encourage you to pray the rosary on a daily basis. There's no such thing as a bad rosary. Try it, and you'll see that God brings you grace. It's a very powerful prayer recommended by all the Holy Father. Now, dear friends, aside from this Catholic priest, what have other Catholic priests said about praying the rosary? Let's see in this next video. Oftentimes, we see, used to be young men because they were part of a gang wearing a rosary around their neck, and more and more, we see that it becomes a piece of jewelry or perhaps a talisman against evil. And often when I see people wearing a rosary, I'm so tempted to ask them, do you know how to pray the rosary? Because that's the important part. It's not just wearing it that's going to ward off evil. It's not like carrying around a rabbit's foot. Do people still do that? I don't think so. But like we used to. Or putting a, a horseshoe over the door. Those are known as talisman. Do they do any good? I won't. I don't know. But certainly, if we have a rosary, then we need to pray it, not just wear it. Certainly not just hang it from our mirrors, as Ed reminded me before Mass, about people who use rosaries on their mirrors and then cut everyone off, not to mention the hand gestures that come with them. They're not blessings, I'll tell you that. We have many prayers in our battery of prayers, our arsenal of prayers, if you would, that resist or help us to resist temptation. And those are weapons that we use spiritually to pray. The rosary certainly is one of them. But we pray the rosary to combat evil. We pray the rosary in our defense. We have in our arsenal the rosary, that crown of roses given to Mary. That each and every time we pray, we give her a rose knowing that she will give us her protection, her mantle of love to guide and protect us. And so we continue to pray the rosary 
to combat the evil in the world. All right, brothers, we just watched a couple of videos where we had uh, some priests to talk about the rosary uh, with those who are either watching them or they're uh, listening to them in their gathering. Well, what do you say to someone who has the rosary, prays the rosary, because he believes that by doing those things, he'll be able to resist temptation and combat the evil in the world? Well, Brother Johnny, first of all, what we can notice from what we heard from the priest, he said that when we pray the rosary, she will give us her protection to combat evil, to, uh, for protection from evil spirits. So the ones who are praying the rosary are offering a prayer or seeking help from Mary and not from God. Likewise, uh, Brother Johnny, in that same note of uh, interest when we heard that they are directing their attention to Mary instead of uh, directing their attention to the Almighty God. It seems as if they don't give enough importance or impetus to the mediator, our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to the Bible, is the one who is able to intercede the prayers of certain people unto the Lord our God. There's no mention of Mary being able to do so. Now, dear friends, what other things have Catholic authorities taught can be accomplished through praying the rosary? Well, let's watch this next video. Many people have asked the question that why do we have to say the rosary every day? Why do we have to have the rosary every day in our homes? There are a couple of teachers, great teachers of our faith, who had some very interesting things to say about this very old practice. St. Louis de Montfort, one of the greatest teachers and promoters of the rosary, taught us that if you said the rosary faithfully until death, I assure you that in spite of the gravity of your sins, you shall receive a never-fading crown of glory. He added that even if you are on the brink of damnation, even if you have one foot in hell, even if you sold your soul to the devil, as the sorcerers do who practice black magic, even if you are a heretic as obstinate as the devil, sooner or later you'll be converted and will mend your life. Pope Pius IX taught us that among all the devotions approved by the church, none has been favored by so many miracles as the devotion of the Most Holy Rosary. Pope St. Pius X taught us that if there were a one million families praying the rosary every day, the entire world would be converted and would be saved. Pope Pius XII taught us that there is no surer means of calling down God's blessing upon the family than the daily recitation of the rosary. Pope John XXIII, on the other hand, told us that the rosary is a school for learning true Christian perfection. If we want to walk in the way of, of holiness, or to learn how we can become better disciples of Christ, the rosary is a sure way of learning all of this. All right, brothers, we just watched another video clip where a priest is talking about uh, the rosary and what he says can be accomplished through praying it. Now, Brother Bernard, if I could begin with you here, what do you say to someone who claims that saying the rosary faithfully until death will result in people receiving a never-fading crown of glory despite the gravity of their sins. Well, Brother Johnny, what is alarming and should call our attention is that all of these alleged benefits of praying the rosary, he gave uh, no biblical basis. Not one Bible verse was cited. In fact, this priest said that of all these great teachers, and he even quoted some popes in history, but he never once referred to any teaching as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. So therefore, we can say that all of the support, all of the alleged benefits of praying the rosary are actually the opinions or teachings of men or people just like you and I, and not the teachings of the Bible. Well, Brother Juan, what about those who claim that the daily recitation of the rosary is the surest way of calling down God's blessings upon the family? What about that? It is very interesting to hear from what they are saying that that would be the one way to call down the uh, powers of heaven 
to come upon the people for the uh, blessings that we need, when in fact we have heard many passages from the Bible that tell us otherwise in the way that or the manner that God teaches us in His Word is completely different from what is being stated. Now, Brother Donald, what about someone who says that the rosary is the sure way of learning how to walk in holiness, how to become a better disciple of Christ, and how to attain true Christian perfection? Well, again, and just like what was mentioned by my counterparts, when it comes to such claims that a person could become a better disciple of Christ or a better Christian, uh, if one does practice utilizing the rosary in their life, it will be for their uh, better welfare or spiritual welfare. Still, nothing based on what is written in the Holy Scriptures. These are more or less just claims. So it will be very interesting to know what the Bible teaches about what is being practiced when it comes to those who have placed their hope when it comes to utilizing the rosary. And that's why we hope, dear brothers and dear friends, that uh, our viewers will continue watching the rest of this particular episode of the program, The International Edition. Now, some might be wondering, well, how do Catholics pray the rosary? Well, here's a video clip of a Catholic cardinal praying the rosary with others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be, the world of God. Uh, friends, uh, the entire video is actually much longer than the little clip that we just watched. We really only watched a snippet of the whole thing. Nevertheless, brothers, what can you say about the way the members of the Catholic Church were praying? What if I could uh, point out, Brother Johnny, it seemed as if there was no real uh, emotion or, should I say, spirituality when it comes to their so-called form of prayer. Everything seemed to be a very robotic, uh, repetitious, if I may add. Again, it didn't seem as if it was a sincere pleading, most especially unto the Lord our God, His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And to add to that, Brother Johnny, even in the body language of those who are praying and in, in, in the, their voices during the prayer, it, it really seemed not only that it was lacking emotion, but maybe there was even, one could say, no emotion at all. And uh, likewise, I would like to add, just in the uh, sense of the prayer itself, being so repetitious and in the manner that it was rendered, it seems there is nothing heartfelt that is coming from the uh, prayer or that is being invoked in the prayer. It just seems something that they are so used to repetitiously uh, carry out as has been their practice for traditions. Well, that Brother Juan, let, let me stay with you, please. Uh, to help our viewers watching the program right now, uh, based on what the Catholic Church teaches, what exactly is the Rosary? Well, let us read from a Catholic encyclopedia. In fact, in volume 13, this book uh, was edited by Charles Herbermann and others and has a nihil obstat by Remy Lafort and imprimatur by Cardinal Farley. This is stated on page 184. Please listen to this. 
The rosary, says the Roman Breviary, is a certain form of prayer wherein we say 15 decades or tens of Hail Marys with an Our Father between each ten, while at each of these 15 decades we recall successively in pious meditation one of the mysteries of our redemption. So, if we noticed, beloved beers, the rosary is a certain form of prayer done in the Roman Catholic Church. And this prayer is composed of 15 decades of tens of Hail Marys with an Our Father between each decade. While praying each decade, Roman Catholics recall successively in pious meditation one of the mysteries of their redemption. That is what was stated. Now, Brother Donna, what was the origin of the rosary as a prayer and devotion? Well, to answer that question, Brother Johnny, we will cite from the same Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 13, on the same page, 184, and they state the following. The same lesson for the Feast of the Holy Rosary informs us that when the Albigensian heresy was devastating the country of Toulouse, St. Dominic earnestly besought the help of Our Lady and was instructed by her, so tradition asserts, to preach the rosary among the people as an antidote to heresy and sin. From that time forward, this manner of prayer was most wonderfully published abroad and developed by St. Dominic, whom different supreme pontiffs have in various passages of their apostolic letters declared to be the institutor and author of the same devotion. So when it comes to the origin of the rosary as a prayer and devotion, according to the Catholic Encyclopedia, this was the instruction allegedly given by Mary to the so-called Saint Dominic to preach the rosary among the people as an antidote to heresy and sin. If you notice, when it came to the uh, quote that we mentioned, there was a Albigensian heresy that took place in the 13th century, from 1209 to 1229 to be exact. And according again to the so-called history of the Catholic Church, St. Dominic was instructed by Mary when it comes to the importance of utilizing the rosary in order to overcome sin. Uh, we must not forget that that assertion on Mary's alleged connection with the rosary was only according to tradition. It was not according to the Bible. The Bible nowhere shows Mary saying anything about the rosary or even giving instructions about having it preached among the people. Now, Brother Bernard, uh, what about the name the Rosary? From where is the name Rosary derived? Well, for the answer, Brother Johnny, if we may keep reading from the Catholic Encyclopedia, the volume 13, but this time on page 187, this is what we can read. As regards the origin of the name, the word Rosarius means a garland or bouquet of roses. An early legend which, after traveling all over Europe, penetrated even to Abyssinia, connected this name with a story of Our Lady, who was seen to take rosebuds from the lips of a young monk when he was reciting Hail Marys and to weave them into a garland which she placed upon her head. According to what we have read, the name Rosary is derived from the Latin word Rosarius, which means a garland or a bouquet of roses. Now, according to what we read, an early legend connected this name with a story about their so-called Virgin Mary and a young monk. And Brother Juan, what is the connection between the Rosary and the month of October? Well, let us read once more the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 13. It's time on page 89. Feast of the Rosary. The naval victory of Lepanto, gained by Don John of Austria, over the Turkish fleet on the first Sunday of October in 1571, responded wonderfully to the processions made at Rome on that same day 
by the members of the Rosary Confraternity. St. Pius V thereupon ordered that a commemoration of the Rosary should be made upon that day, and at the request of the Dominican Order, Gregory the Thirteenth in 1573 allowed this feast to be kept in all churches which possessed an altar dedicated to the Holy Rosary. And somewhat later, Clement XI commanded the Feast of the Rosary to be celebrated by the Universal Church. October is the month of the Rosary devotion in the Roman Catholic Church because the so-called Feast of the Holy Rosary is celebrated on the first Sunday of October. This is a day of commemoration of the naval victory of Lepanto that was gained by Don John of Austria over the Turkish fleet on the first Sunday of October in 1571. That naval victory is said to have had responded wonderfully to the processions, to the processions on that same day by the members of the uh, Rosary Confraternity. Now, brothers and dear friends, uh, probably we've noticed that when our Catholic friends are praying the rosary, they have the rosary beads. Well, what about the rosary beads? Why do Roman Catholics use rosary beads when they pray the rosary? Well, that's what we'll talk about next on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Today, we're talking about the Rosary. The Bible does not show the early Christians who lived during the time of Christ and His apostles praying the Rosary. Also, the Bible does not show Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving any instruction for the followers of Christ to pray the Rosary. Now, earlier, we were watching some videos and uh, we could see the Catholic priests and members of the Catholic Church praying the rosary, and they have with them their rosary beads. Now, Brother Donald, what about the rosary beads when uh, Catholics are praying the rosary, they're holding them, and they're praying the rosary with those beads? What should people understand about them? Well, to be more enlightened, let's read from a book entitled Radio Replies, Volume 2. And this book was written by Leslie Rumble and Charles Carty, both of whom are Catholic priests. And the said publication has an imprimatur, which is Latin for permission to print, meaning to say the contents of this publication are in accordance with Catholic teachings. And they state the following on page 264. Why do they count rosary beads? They don't. They know just how many beads there are in a rosary without having to count them. To save any attention to the counting of their prayers, they use rosary beads. So to the question, why do Roman Catholics use rosary beads when they pray the rosary? According to what we've read, to save any attention to the counting of their prayers. Therefore, Roman Catholics count their rosary prayers by means of the rosary beads. Well, Brother Bernard, what about the origin of the use of rosary beads? Of what origin is the use of such things? Well, Brother Johnny, since we could not find it in anywhere in the Holy Scriptures or the Bible, we'd like to share what is written in a book called The Two Babylons, which was written by Alexander Hislop. And this is what is stated on page 187. Everyone knows how thoroughly Romanist is the use of the rosary, and how the devotees of Rome mechanically tell their prayers upon their beads. The rosary, however, is no invention of the papacy. It is of the highest antiquity and almost universally found among pagan nations. The rosary was used as a sacred instrument among the ancient Mexicans. It is commonly employed among the Brahmins of Hindustan, and in the Hindu sacred books, reference is made to it again and again. Of what origin is the use of the rosary beads? According to what we have read, it is of pagan origin. 
Now, we must, we must understand that pagans are not Christians. Thus, the use of rosary beads is of a non-Christian origin. The rosary is of the highest antiquity, and according to what we have read, is almost universally found among the pagan nations. And Brother Juan, uh, by the way, what did a Roman Catholic priest say about the rosary? Well, let us read that from the book written, The Spiritual Life of a Priest, which of course was written by Eugene M. Eugene Boy Boylan, and has a nihil obstat by Jacobus Bastible, and an imprimatur by one named Daniel. On page 162, still the rosary for some men will always be a problem. Distractions, routine, repetition, they tend to make it a mere mechanical lip offering. Often a man comes to the end of the fifth decade of the beats to find his mind has been miles away all the time. So, according to M. Eugene Boylan, he is a Roman Catholic priest, by the way, he said that the rosary, for some men, it will always be a problem. Why did he say that? If you factor in distractions, routine, repetition, he said, that tends to make it a mere mechanical lip offering. In other words, lip service. So one may find out that while praying the rosary, his mind has already been miles away all the time, as he stated. So, uh, brothers and dear viewers, the big question right now is this one. Should Christians pray the rosary? Well, that's what we'll discover next after the break. The Iglesia de Cristo International Edition will continue. Welcome back, everyone, to the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. Today, we've been talking about the rosary. Catholics are taught to pray the rosary, thinking that by doing so, they will be able to fight against evil and secure blessings from God. So the question is this one, Brother Donald. According to the Bible, should Christians pray the rosary? Well, let's consult with our Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he makes known the following as recorded here in Matthew, the chapter 6, and the verse is 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. So to the question, should Christians pray the rosary? The answer is a definite no. And why is this? Because when it comes to the rosary, it goes against the teaching of our Savior, the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to our Lord Jesus, vain repetitions should not be used in prayer. In fact, if we were going to read the same pronouncement of our Lord Jesus Christ from the Living Bible, the verse reads this way, Don't recite the same prayer over and over as the heathen do who think prayers are answered only by repeating them again and again. Remember, your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. And that's why, Brother Donald, and also our viewers and friends, we have to ask the question, are there vain repetitions in praying the rosary? Yes, there are. And uh, Brother Bernard, if I may, our Lord Jesus Christ he said that we should not pray like the heathen or the pagans because they use vain repetitions. They think that by doing so, they shall be heard for their much speaking. As we have learned, what origin is the use of the rosary beads? And of course, we were taught that it is of pagan origin. Christians, therefore, they do not have rosary beads. Christians do not use any bead strings or in prayer or in any matter whatsoever. And the church that teaches its members to have the rosary beads and to pray the rosary, that is a church that does not belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Uh, Brother Bernard, l let me go to you with this question, please. Is a prayer that is a mere mechanical lip offering, a prayer like that, is that prayer acceptable to God? Well, Brother Johnny, for that answer, we don't want to give our opinion. So let's continue to consult the Bible and the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, as what is recorded here in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and also verses 8 to 9. This is what we can read. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Is a prayer that is a mere mechanical lip service, that is something that is recited, maybe even going through the motions, acceptable to our Almighty God? The Bible teaches us that it is not. According to what we have read, such lip service or worship is in vain. In fact, the Bible says people draw near to God with their mouth, they honor Him with their lips, yet their heart is far from our Almighty God. That's why, what is the grave consequence if a prayer would fall into this type of category? The Bible says they worship God in vain because they're teaching as doctrines what is really the commandment or teaching of people or men. Now, Brother Juan, what if somebody is asking this question? Why is it that people should not serve and worship God according to the commandments of men? Why should people not use men's commandments, men's teachings as their basis when it comes to serving God. Why not? Well, there is an answer that we can get from the uh, Bible which answers to that. For example, in Titus, if you go to 1 and 14 of Titus, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men who turn from the truth. Well, did you notice that? Why we should not serve and worship God according to the commandments of men is made very clear, isn't it? Because the commandments of man, they turn men from the truth. The commandments of man as a basis for serving, for worshiping God, they are not in accordance to the truth. And again, they turn men away from the truth. Brother Donald, what is the truth that should be the basis of all the services, the worship that we are rendering to the Almighty God? What is truth? Well, our Lord Jesus Christ teaches, which is that truth, here in John 17, 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. In this part of the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ, he says unto God, your word is truth. And where are the truth of the words of God written? They are written in the Holy Bible. Therefore, when it comes to those who want to be recognized as a true servant of God, or a true servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, their service and worship should be solely based upon the teachings of God written in the Holy Bible, not based on the commandments of men, which, according to what we read earlier, is turning away from the truth of the words of the Lord our God. When it comes to the so-called rosary, again, this is a man-made teaching, and therefore one should not accept it. Because again, this is based on the traditions and the legends of man when it comes to Mary and their Saint Dominic. And Brother Bernard, what did another Roman Catholic priest say about the rosary that we really have to take a careful look at? Well, Brother Johnny, let's share with our viewers one more claim. I'm going to read from a book entitled, What is the Truth About Catholics? And this is a book written by John O'Brien, and this is what we find on page 219. The rosary may well be called the thermometer of Christianity. When it is used, Christianity is flourishing. When it is neglected, Christianity falls to a low ebb. According to this Roman Catholic priest, the rosary may well be called the thermometer of Christianity. Or in other words, it is the measuring stick of one's discipleship or obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the claim by this Catholic priest is that when the rosary is used, then that means Christianity is flourishing. But if the rosary would be neglected, then Christianity would reach a low ebb or would be at its lowest levels.
Brother Juan, according to the Apostle Paul, what is the thermometer of Christianity to uh, use the terminology used by the Catholic priest? Well, if we will consult with the uh, scripture, Galatians 6 2 says the following Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Well, according to the Apostle Paul, as we have just noticed, what is the thermometer of Christianity? Again, to use the uh, priest terminology, the thermometer of Christianity is to fulfill the laws and commandments of Christ by the Christians. That is the real basis. And Brother Donald, what should people understand or realize about the commandments that were taught by our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, what they should understand is that the laws or the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ are actually the laws of God. And this is for sure, and when we read John 12, 49, it is explained by our Savior himself. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ, he did not speak of himself. God commanded our Lord Jesus Christ what he should say and what he should speak. Therefore, when it comes to the thermometer of Christianity, it is the fulfillment by Christians of the commandments of our Lord Jesus Christ, which are ultimately the commandments of the Lord our God. When Christians fulfill the Christian law, Christianity is flourishing, utilizing the expression from the citation we read earlier. When Christians neglect the Christian law, Christianity falls to a low ebb. And therefore, when it comes to the rosary, it is not such as what the priest mentioned. It is not a thermometer, a barometer. It is not a measurement of if a person is a Christian or not, but rather what is written in the Holy Scriptures when obeyed, and that is the true barometer or measuring stick. And that's why, dear friends and viewers, in summary, the true Christians or the members of the Church of Christ do not have rosary beads because the use of rosary beads is of pagan origin. And Christians do not pray the rosary because the rosary, which is a vain, repetitious prayer, is not in accordance with the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why true Christians do not have the rosary devotional, because such devotion is based on traditions and legends taught by men and not as taught by the Word of God or what the words are written in the Holy Scriptures. And dear viewers, we would like to invite our loved ones and our friends who are still in the Catholic Church, we would like to invite them to bravely face the truth, not only by discarding the rosary prayer and devotion, but also by joining in the acceptable service rendered to God by His people who are inside the Iglesia ni Cristo, Iglesia de Cristo, or Church of Christ. So, dear friends, we'd like to thank Brother Juan Fisher in Los Angeles, California, Brother Bernard Daos in San Francisco, California, and Brother Donald Pinnock in Toronto, Canada, for giving us Bible-based answers so that as the Apostle Peter said to the members of the church, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you're living the way you are, which we could read in 1 Peter 3, 15. Well, dear friends, that does it for us here on the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition. We hope you'll join us again next time. I'm Jenny Martin, and thank you so much for watching. And as we come to the end of the program, we invite you to join us for a short prayer. Dear God, a merciful Father in heaven, yes, Father, we yes. come with gratitude before thy presence yes. to yes. have had this wonderful moment that you granted to us yes. to extend our love to our viewers, yes. to our friends and loved ones. Amen. May we all have benefited from your words. Yes. May we all have benefited from the lessons that were delivered in this program yes. to touch our hearts to accept the truth, yeah. to faith with love, the things that need to be implemented in our life yeah. in order for you 
to be the grace of our salvation. And Lord Amen. Jesus, we come to you also yes. with utmost gratitude. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts yes, that yes. in these moments, O oh Lord, the people who have heard this truth, who have heard this message, may it have its place in their hearts. Amen. May it take its rightful place and do the righteous things to change our lives. Yes that we yes. may always be in accordance to your commandments. Yes, may we always yes. be guided by the light of your scripture. Yes. And may your yes. sacrifice, we may be all be able to benefit yes. from the grace of yes. your salvation yes. that you have made yes. to give us this great hope. Amen. And dear God, Amen. we ask for unity of faith. Yes. We ask yes. that you give us the aim, the spirit of your administration. Yes. We ask yes. always yes. for the guidance of the light of your words yes. to shine in yes. our path as we yes. enjoin yes. our loved ones to the path that leads us to the eternal life you promise. Amen. This is Amen. our prayer in the name of thy Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.